Hi everyone and welcome to another wildlife photography video. Um, I haven't planned this video at all, it's going to be a really short video and um, basically I'm just going to show you a few things that I use when I'm out in the field in terms of clothing. This video is by no means a detailed rundown of what I think you should wear out in the field. I've just picked out a few things that I find really really useful for myself so I'm going to share those with you. So the first one is these insulated wellies which are lined with neoprene. I'm going to take this off so I can actually show you properly okay so uh, they will look pretty much like ordinary wellies well the big difference is that your ordinary wellies have just absolutely terrible insulating properties the one thing you don't want to wear in the cold when you're waiting is ordinary wellies so these they are lined with neoprene so that's what gives them the difference either three millimeters or five millimeters neoprene and that's what gives it the insulating properties and the difference like literally I don't think I'm exaggerating I would say that buying the insulated wellies literally changed my life which might sound like a bit of an exaggeration when you're talking about wellies um, but the difference it makes is massive so I'm someone who tends to get cold feet quite easily um, and these things they just keep your feet so warm just with that extra insulation um, just as waterproof as your normal wellies would be So it might be difficult to see, but the, the, they kind of look built up a lot of the time. If you look here, it kind of looks a little built up around the arch. Um, so try to get some that look like that, I would say. Don't get the cheapest ones. I got some really cheap ones, and they lasted about three months. These ones, which were more like about 50, 55 pounds, um, and they have lasted well over a year so far. And they're showing really no signs of actually falling apart anywhere. So. Yeah, just try and get the ones that look a bit more solid and not the cheapest. Um, and that top bit is also like really flexible as well, so it just makes it a bit comfortable when you're walking around. But if you want, you can still go and stand up in a stream um, and it'll be absolutely waterproof, absolutely fine. So yeah, really good piece of kit. So the next one is uh, the soft shell, soft shell jacket. And I've only had this for a few months actually, never tried the soft shell. Just, I don't know why really, just never got around to trying it. Um, but. A, Big thanks to Tom Mason if Tom's watching out there at all. Tom's an excellent wildlife photographer and he's a big fan of the soft shell. Um, reasons I like it, I'd say the main reason is actually the material. So you'll see it's, it's a little bit stretchy the material, uh, but it's also very durable. If I'm expecting to be photographing wildlife, you never know quite where you're going to end up, what you're going to end up doing. Um, if I'm like scrambling around on the ground, getting myself in awkward positions, then it does help just having that stretchy quality to it and also it's just it's more durable than your ordinary kind of jacket that you might wear for outdoor photography so if you wore your, your ordinary waterproof jacket um, if you decide you want to go and run through a hawthorn bush it's probably not going to last very long um, <laughs> but this is I wouldn't advise running through a hawthorn bush but generally just going through trees and undergrowth or rocks would be a really good example if you crawling over rocks to try and get some pictures then just this extra durability I think really helps and the other thing about this although it's not actually called a coat necessarily it does still have waterproofing qualities and windproofing qualities as well and I find it's pretty good on, on both of those it won't last for too long in a heavy downpour um, but a shower is, is not really a, a major problem and the windproofing I think is pretty good so this has become like my main wildlife photography outer layer now uh, next up is the gloves so you might have seen me wearing these in a few videos quite a few videos probably these are the gloves I like to wear a lot of the time when I'm shooting and the beauty of these is these very thin gloves these are pimple palm I think they're horse riding gloves in fact um, and this is something I managed to find that seemed to suit me uh, when I'm out in the field I can actually wear these and still control the camera so I can still feel the controls through these gloves which is a real bonus um, they're, they're not super super warm but I do find just generally out and about uh, if it's you know if it's a bit chilly and if you're carrying your tripod and your hands can get cold easier doing that then just this extra layer it really makes a difference so I'm a massive fan of these gloves and believe me you could go through a few of these in the year and uh, it won't break the bank now if it's really really cold I'll wear these 
the really really thick big really well insulated gloves these keep my hands very warm uh, but the downside is I can't feel anything through them so these are basically if it's very very cold such as uh, in the snow for example I'm carrying my gear around then I'll wear these gloves um, if I'm waiting and I don't need to get to the camera then I'll have these gloves on and then what I'll actually do is have the thinner glove the thinner gloves on underneath take those off when I'm ready to photograph and then I can get to the controls on the camera again the next one is simply you know wear a hat and it might not seem like it's gonna make a huge amount of difference but believe me when you're out in the field and you start to get cold just putting the hat on will make a massive difference to keeping you warm we lose a huge amount of body feet uh, we lose a huge amount of body heat from our head so I'd say just putting the hat on probably equivalent to putting on two thin layers and keeping you warm and the last one is the jacket so really really like this jacket spent a bit of time deciding on this and spent a bit of extra money on it because it was really important so the soft shell jacket is really good for wildlife photography a bit more durable this is going to be better uh, out in the rain but this one's got a very good waterproofing quality and it's pretty wind resistant as well um, obviously they do rustle more which is why they're not as good for wildlife so this is more my kind of landscape photography jacket if anything um, <clears throat> inside is really nicely lined so it feels a bit warmer nice zip pockets which is always important and a few extra pockets like this one here and there's one inside as well so extra pockets really useful for me carrying those extra little bits of gear um, and the other useful thing is the hood so I specifically tried to get one that had one of these peaked hoods and the reason for that you learn these things over the years that if the water starts dripping off there on the front it kind of drips in front of you instead of on you so I would always look for a coat that's got that peaked, peaked hood on it oh my ears are getting cold I need a hat now as well as the soft shell jacket and the uh, the other more waterproof coat I do actually have a third coat and the reason for this is this this is basically my um, get down in the dirt cover it in muck don't really care coat which I think everyone should have one of them if you're a wildlife photographer the other two I try not to muck up too much but this one this is the one that I'm gonna wear when I know I'm gonna be getting down in the muck on the ground getting wet uh, maybe in the snow maybe at the beach so this is this is the one that just gets covered in in whatever <sighs> Where's my keys? But it's important that it's still fairly good qualities to it. So it's got quite a nice lining. So it keeps it pretty warm and the waterproofing qualities are quite good as well. So um, the other thing I do is get this coat a size bigger. The idea being that if I'm sat in a hide waiting for a long time with lots of layers on, then it's just a bit easier to have a bigger coat. I can move around, it's not too tight. But yeah, this is the coat this is the coat for getting mucky thanks so much for watching the video i really appreciate all the viewers and subscribers if you're not a subscriber and you're really interested in nature photography and uh, watching men crawl around on the ground then yeah click subscribe and also click the bell icon because that gives you notifications every time i upload a new video um, if you feel like sharing this video on social media i'll be massively uh, grateful i'll see you somewhere in nature sometime soon